Have you ever wondered why so many people ignore one of the most frightening prophecies in the Bible? Few have the courage to face the truth. The Antichrist is coming, and with him the dreaded mark of the beast. Who will dare to resist? Many believe that it is just a distant story, but the truth that the Bible reveals goes much further. This is not just any choice, it is a battle for your soul. And in the next few minutes, you'll discover why this decision will be more important than any other in your life. What does it really mean to refuse the mark of the beast? This is not just about resisting an oppressive system, it's about choosing a path that many are not prepared to follow. Whoever accepts the mark will be condemning his soul to a fate of eternal torment. But what happens to those who refuse it? Many believe that resistance will be impossible. But what if I told you that there is something that few know about? A shocking revelation about what God has in store for those who remain faithful. The answer will surprise you. Most people have no idea what's about to happen. The signs are more evident than ever, but the world prefers to ignore them. The truth is, we're closer to that moment than you might think, and what you're going to learn today could literally save your life. Revelation describes a future in which each person will have to choose between accepting the mark and living under an evil regime, or resisting and facing the consequences. But are these consequences as bad as they seem? What few know is that the real reward for refusing the trademark goes far beyond what one can imagine. Imagine a world where everything is under the control of a single leader. Freedom as we know it will disappear, and those who do not bow to the system will be persecuted. Many have already decided that they will submit to the power of the Antichrist, believing that it is the only way to survive. But what if I tell you that by refusing the brand, you will be guaranteeing something much bigger? Not just his eternal life, but a place in God's redemptive plan. This isn't just about saying no. It's about aligning with the truth that few dare to follow. Are you ready for this choice? The question that everyone avoids. What will life be like for those who resist? The Bible gives us a clear answer, but it is an answer that few are willing to accept. Those who stand firm, who trust in God's promises and refuse the mark, will be writing His name in eternity. And what will come next for these chosen few? The reward goes beyond imagination, and what you discover today could change everything you thought about the future. Don't leave now, because in the next few minutes you will understand why the choice to refuse the mark of the beast is the most critical point in your spiritual life. At the end of this video, we will say a prayer together, asking for strength, discernment and faith to endure when the moment comes. If you want to know what God has prepared for those who stand firm, stay with me until the end. What you're about to discover will change your view of the future forever. When we look at biblical prophecies, especially those that describe the last days, we are confronted with a terrifying figure, the Antichrist. His rise to power marks the beginning of a period of great tribulation. Scripture mentions that he will rule with an iron fist, unifying nations and imposing a single mark, the dreaded mark of the beast, which Matthew reminds us in the chapter and verse about his inevitability. But who is this figure? The Antichrist represents total rebellion against God, and his ultimate goal is to replace the worship of the Creator with the worship of himself. The prophecies are clear. His arrival will bring chaos, but also an important choice for Christians. The mark of the beast is not only a symbol of political control, but a spiritual one. Those who accept it will literally be marking their souls for an eternal destiny away from God. It is interesting to note how many will ask themselves, why can't I just refuse? The answer, as Revelation warns us, is that those who refuse the mark will be considered enemies of the system. They will become exiles, marginalized, unable to buy or sell. However, the Bible also speaks of something wonderful. God's grace will be sufficient for the faithful, those who fully trust in their faith in Jesus. Imagine the growing tension of this moment, people being forced to choose between temporary comfort and eternal salvation. It is in this context that the exiles, those who refuse the brand, will be persecuted. Perhaps you have felt this way on a smaller scale when you took a stand for faith and were judged for it. But think of it on a global level. 
As Luke describes in that chapter, faith will be tested to the utmost. However, this will also be an opportunity to show true trust in God. And for those who stand firm, the Bible's promises of eternal salvation will be their sustenance. In history, we see practical examples of persecution because of faith. Just remember the first Christians who were thrown into the arenas for not bowing down to Caesar. Today, there may not be lions waiting for us, but the pressure to conform to the system is palpable. The difference is that in the times of the Antichrist, this conformity will not only be a matter of physical survival, but a spiritual one. The world will be about to enter an era of darkness like never before. However, Jesus, as the Bible teaches us, continues to be the light, and the faithful will find in him the strength to resist. What many may not know is that this period of tribulation is not an end, but a prelude to something greater. Just as a storm precedes calm, the Antichrist's persecution paves the way for God's ultimate victory. The Bible reveals to us that this period will be short but intense. The Antichrist may seem invincible, but he has been defeated since the beginning of time. Those who trust in God and remain faithful to biblical promises will know that despite the hardships, the reward will be incomparable. As Matthew shows us, the end of this battle has already been written, and the victory belongs to Christ. And it is with this certainty that the faithful will face the darkest days of humanity, when all seems lost, when society rejects and persecutes them, they will remember the words of hope that permeate the Bible. The Christian faith is not just a belief, but a constant journey of trust in God. No matter how hard the Antichrist strives to destroy this faith, it will remain unshaken because it is grounded in the eternal promises. The time of the Antichrist will come, but it will also be brief, and the eternal kingdom of God will reveal itself in all its splendor. In the days when the Antichrist will dominate the earth, the entire world will be plunged into an unprecedented tyranny. Revelation shows us that those who refuse to worship the beast and accept his mark will be excluded from society. Imagine a life where you can't buy, sell, or even exist safely without bearing the mark of the beast. This will be the fate of those who still try to remain faithful to God. The imposition will be brutal a choice between giving in to pressure or being treated as an outcast. As Revelation 13, 16, 17 mentions, to all, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, a mark was given on their right hand or forehead, and without it no one can participate in the economy or ensure their survival. These days will be times of psychological and physical terror. Under the rule of the Antichrist, those who refuse to accept the mark will be hunted down and punished. The promise of peace and prosperity that he will bring will be only a facade for the true spiritual slavery that he imposes. The Bible describes this time as an era of profound deception in which the Antichrist will be worshipped as a god and many will be seduced by his false miracles. Revelation 13, 14 says that he will deceive those who dwell on the earth with the signs that he was permitted to perform. Control over mind and body will be absolute, and to accept the mark will mean submitting not only to tyrannical rule, but also to God's judgment. Accepting the mark of the beast, as described in Revelation, will not be a simple matter of survival, but a spiritual decision with eternal consequences. Those who accept it will be completely surrendering to the corrupt system that the Antichrist will create, a system based on worshipping him and denying God. There will be a false sense of security, where many will believe that by following the beast, they will be protected and immune to the chaos that takes over the world. However, Revelation 14, 9, 10 warns us that if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall also drink of the wine of God's wrath, prepared without mixture in the cup of his wrath. Those who submit to this tyranny will find not salvation, but eternal punishment. As time progresses, those who have received the mark will see the true face of the Antichrist's regime. He will promise order and stability, but what he will deliver will be despair and destruction. The earth will begin to be beset by natural calamities, and chaos will ensue. Plagues will begin to ravage mankind, and as Revelation 16, 2 reveals, 
Malignant and pernicious ulcers arose in men who bore the mark of the beast. The brand, which initially seemed like a blessing for survival, will soon prove to be an unbearable burden. Those who have accepted the mark will face indescribable pain and affliction with no hope of relief. With total dominion over humanity, the Antichrist will cause the world to move towards Armageddon. His influence will be so great that it will unite nations and armies in an ungodly alliance against God. Those who have followed the Antichrist will be led to believe that they are fighting for their freedom, when in fact they will be fighting for their own condemnation. The deception will be so profound that even the signs and wonders performed by the Antichrist will seduce the majority. However, Revelation makes it clear that this dominion is temporary and that as invincible as it may seem, the end of the Antichrist is already determined. Their defeat is certain and those who have accepted their mark will face God's wrath on the day of judgment. In these end times, oppression will be total and mankind will be divided between those who have remained faithful to God and those who have surrendered to the Antichrist. It will be a period of intense trial where deceit and tyranny will dominate. But for those who trust in God's grace and do not bow to the beast system, there will be hope, even in the midst of persecution. Faith in Jesus will be the only light in the midst of darkness, and those who hold it will find salvation, while those who have accepted the mark will be given over to eternal destruction. When the heavenly temple opened and God's judgment began to be poured out on the earth, the scene of spiritual warfare was about to reach its climax. However, before these apocalyptic events, there was a celestial fall that changed the history of the universe. The Bible reveals to us that Satan, one of the highest and most powerful angels, rebelled against God. With his cunning and persuasion, he managed to corrupt a third of the angels who lived in harmony with the Creator. Revelation 12 Four mentions that his tail dragged away the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. These stars represent the angels who fell with him, and this betrayal brought chaos to the cosmos. Satan's persuasion is a force that should not be underestimated. He knew the Creator and lived in his presence, but moved by pride and desire to be worshipped, he deceived the angels who were at his side, leading them into rebellion. Imagine the scene, heavenly beings created to glorify and worship God, now seduced by lies and empty promises. The Bible makes it clear that Satan does not act randomly. He is the master of deception. Ezekiel 28, 17 speaks of his fall. Your heart is lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom because of your brightness. I have cast you to the ground. What started as a simple seed of pride grew into a cosmic rebellion. This same Satan, who corrupted one-third of the angels, now uses his millennia-old knowledge of mankind to deceive and subjugate them. He knows how the human mind works, and he knows our weaknesses. From Eden, when he seduced Adam and Eve with promises of power and knowledge, to the last days described in Revelation, Satan has been relentless in his mission to lead people away from God. He is described at 1 Peter 5, ate as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And in the last days he will use all his cunning and deceit to convince mankind to accept the mark of the beast and rebel against the Creator. It is important to understand that Satan's power is rooted in deception. He does not force people to sin, but seduces them with false promises of freedom, power and fulfillment. Just as he deceived the angels in heaven, he continues to deceive mankind into believing that they can live apart from God and still find success. In Revelation 12, 9, Satan is called the great dragon, that old serpent who deceives the whole world. He will use his lies to corrupt the masses, leading them to worship him through the Antichrist. But as we know from scripture, the end of this deception is near. When the seven angels leave the heavenly temple with the bowls of God's wrath, it is a reminder that Satan's time is running out. He may have deceived the angels and mankind, but his ultimate defeat is already written. He will be cast into the lake of fire as described in Revelation 20.10, and all who have followed him, whether in heaven or on earth, will share in his condemnation. Brothers and sisters, before we go any further, 
I would like to bring you some very important information. You know, even if you're subscribed to the channel, you may not be getting all the notifications for the new videos. YouTube works in a way that prioritizes content with the most engagement. To make sure you don't miss our next messages, do the following. Check your subscription, turn on notifications by clicking on the bell, and if possible, leave a like and comment on the videos. This helps YouTube understand that you want to see our content. Okay, now let's get back to our subject. God in his justice will bring the final judgment upon Satan and all who have allied themselves with him. Those who resist deception and remain faithful to God will have a place in the new heaven and the new earth where there will be no more suffering, pain or death. In this final time of judgment and separation, the contrast between those who have fallen into Satan's deception and those who have stood firm in the faith will be clearer than ever. The heavenly temple opened and the angels bringing the plagues upon the earth are a harbinger of Satan's ultimate defeat. The power of persuasion that he used to corrupt the angels and mankind will finally be destroyed and the kingdom of God will triumph forever. In the final days, as described in the book of Revelation, God's judgments will fall upon mankind in an intense and relentless manner, repeating in many ways the scourges that God brought upon Egypt in the time of Moses. Just like in the Exodus, where the plagues were signs of God's power and a call to repentance for Pharaoh and the Egyptian people, these final judgments will serve to reveal God's justice and holiness, bringing punishment to those who rebelled against him by following the Antichrist. Revelation 16 begins to describe these judgments, and the first of them is a plague of sore ulcers on all who have received the mark of the beast, as it is said in verse 2. And the first angel fell and poured out his vial on the earth, and an evil and malignant sore was made on the men who had the mark of the beast. This plague resembles the sixth plague that fell on Egypt, when ulcers and painful wounds struck the Egyptians, Exodus 9, 9, 11. Likewise, in the last days, those who have allied themselves with the corrupt system of the Antichrist will experience these physical afflictions, being a reflection of their spiritual separation from God. The judgments do not stop there. The waters, both the rivers and the seas, will turn to blood, just as in Egypt when the waters of the Nile became blood, Exodus 7, 20, 21. Revelation 16, 3, 4 describes that the second angel poured out his vial into the sea and it became blood as of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. The third angel poured out his vial on the rivers and springs of water and they also became blood. The turning of the waters into blood is a clear sign of the spiritual contamination of humanity. Just as in Egypt, where corrupt waters brought death and despair, in the last days, water, which symbolizes life, will become a symbol of judgment and condemnation. These judgments demonstrate that sin affects not only man, but also all creation, which groans and suffers the consequences of rebellion against God. Romans 8:22. Mankind will see the price of their idolatry and worship of the Antichrist. God's judgments, though terrible, are designed to reveal his justice and righteousness. Revelation 16, 5, 6 teaches us that you are righteous, O Lord, who are and who were and who are holy, because you have judged these things. Because they shed the blood of the saints and prophets, you also gave them blood to drink, for of this they are deserving. Another judgment that reflects the scourges of Egypt is the plague of darkness. In Egypt, God brought darkness so thick that it could be felt, Exodus 10, 21, 23. In Revelation, the kingdom of the beast will be plunged into darkness, as described in Revelation 16, 10, 11. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became dark, and they bit their tongues in pain. Darkness is a symbol of complete separation from God. Those who have worshipped the beast and rejected the light of Christ will experience deep physical and spiritual darkness. Even in the midst of so much pain, the followers of the Antichrist will harden their hearts and, like Pharaoh, will not repent. Human rebelliousness will be evident, for Revelation 16.11 tells us that they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their ulcers. 
and repented not of their works. The plagues that God brought upon Egypt were a sign of his power and sovereignty over all nations. In the last days, these global judgments reflect the same truth. God is sovereign over the entire world, and all who have opposed him will see the result of their rebellion. The sun, which has always been a source of life, will now burn with unbearable heat, as Revelation 16, 8, 9 describes, the fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given to him to burn men with fire. This extreme heat brings out divine justice, and men, instead of turning to God, will choose to blaspheme his name, refusing to give him glory. These judgments demonstrate that God is just in all his actions, just as he judged Egypt for the slavery and suffering he imposed on the people of Israel, he will judge the world for idolatry and sin. The judgments of revelation are not only punishments, but also a call to repentance, even though many do not hear it. In the midst of this scenario of destruction, God's faithful will be protected, just as the people of Israel were protected in the plagues of Egypt. However, this protection does not mean the absence of suffering, but rather the assurance that in the end, they will be vindicated and live in the new heaven and the new earth. The Battle of Armageddon is the time when all the forces of evil will unite to face God in a final and decisive confrontation. As described in Revelation 16:16, 16, 16, and they gathered them together to the place which in Hebrew is called Armageddon. This will be the scene of the last great conflict where the armies of the world, seduced by the power of the Antichrist, will march to a war that is already decided. Armageddon symbolizes the gathering of the nations against God, but contrary to what these armies think, it will be the Lord himself who will defeat them. This will not be a battle between equals, but the full manifestation of God's power against the kingdom of darkness. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet will have deceived the nations into rising up against heaven. They will perform signs and wonders to convince the kings of the earth that they can overcome the Creator. Revelation 16, 13, 14 speaks of unclean frog-like spirits that come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, for they are the spirits of demons who work signs and go out to meet the kings of the earth. This deception will be profound and effective, and many nations will ally themselves with the Antichrist without knowing that they are marching to their own destruction. Satan, who has deceived one-third of the angels in heaven and mankind over the centuries, now leads his followers to final defeat. The armies will deploy in the Valley of Megiddo, prepared for a battle they believe they can win, but God will intervene supernaturally. Revelation 19.11 16 describes the coming of Christ in glory, riding on a white horse, with the heavenly armies following him. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on him is called Faithful and True, and he judges and fights with righteousness. Christ the King of kings and Lord of lords will descend with power and great glory, bringing final judgment upon the rebellious nations. He will not need earthly weapons or armies. His word will be sufficient to defeat all enemies. For out of his mouth proceeds a sharp sword to smite the nations. Revelation 19.15 The victory will be quick and total. The Antichrist and the false prophet will be captured and thrown alive into the lake of fire. Revelation 19.20 And Satan will be bound for a thousand years, as described in Revelation 20.1.3 all those who have risen up against God, who have accepted the mark of the beast and worshipped the Antichrist, will be destroyed on the battlefield. Scripture says that all the birds were filled with their flesh, Revelation 19.21, a vivid picture of God's judgment on the wicked. The war that seemed imminent will actually be a complete and guaranteed victory from the start because God has never been challenged in his power. Armageddon represents Satan's last desperate attempt to resist God's plan. From the moment he rebelled in heaven, he has struggled to destroy God's creation, and Armageddon is the culmination of his efforts. However, just as he was defeated on the cross, he will be defeated again in a definitive way in this battle. God will fulfill his promises, and Satan's kingdom will be destroyed forever. This is the time when biblical prophecies are fully fulfilled and God's righteous judgment is established. 
After the defeat of Satan and his armies, the way will be prepared for the creation of a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness will dwell forever. God will restore all things, and his people will live in eternal peace and harmony. Armageddon is not the end, but the beginning of glorious eternity for the faithful. The battle has been fought, the victory is Christ's, and the kingdom of God will be established forever, as Revelation 21, 1 reveals to us. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and the sea is no more. With the final defeat of Satan, the Antichrist, and their armies at Armageddon, the time of complete restoration begins. The focus is now no longer on battles or suffering, but on the fulfillment of God's eternal plan for creation. With the end of chaos and corruption, everything that has been affected by sin is transformed. Creation, which has suffered since the fall, is now set free. The old order of things, with its marks of pain and destruction, no longer exists. Revelation brings us into a new reality where the renewal of the universe reveals God's ultimate purpose for humanity. At this point, complete redemption manifests itself in something far beyond a simple physical renewal. What happens here is a recreation, a transition to something entirely new, where there is no place for traces of the corrupted past. Revelation shows us that this new reality is not an improved version of the previous one, but something that goes beyond imagination. The limitations of humanity, both physical and spiritual, have been left behind. All that has been tainted by evil will be completely replaced by that which is perfect, pure, and eternal. The great highlight of this new moment is not only the restoration of a physical world, but the change in the relationship between God and humanity, Whereas before the relationship was mediated by prophets, priests, and the very work of Christ, now the communion is direct. There are no more barriers, distances, or intermediaries. God the Creator and redeemed humanity now live in a perfect union, something that has been planned since before time. This is the central point of the entire narrative of redemption, the complete reconciliation between God and His creation with no further separations. It is in this transformed environment that believers now find their true home. The promises that sustained the faithful during periods of persecution, judgment and tribulation were not merely about a place, but about a condition of existence. From that point on, all the doubts, fears and anguish that have accompanied the journey of Christ's followers throughout history cease. The ultimate goal of the entire spiritual journey is revealed. Salvation was not just about escaping sin and death, but about attaining that fullness of life in communion with the Creator. At this point in the narrative, the concept of time and history as we know it is no longer relevant. What begins is an eternity of peace, harmony, and direct connection with God. There is no longer any need to remember what has been lost, for what lies ahead is so great that the past ceases to matter. The new reality is now marked by the eternity in which God dwells with his people, and that is the only condition that prevails forever. There is no more pain, fear, or sin, only life in its purest expression. Now that judgment has been completed and evil has been defeated forever, creation enters into its true form, the one God intended from the beginning. This is not the end of a cycle, but the beginning of a reality that will never be interrupted. The story of the plan of redemption is ending, but the life it has provided is just beginning. The ultimate vision is not about destruction or judgment, but about the beginning of an eternal life in which all that has been promised will be fulfilled in its entirety. We have come to the crux of this message. There is no middle ground. The Bible makes it clear that when the time comes, there will be only one way that will lead to eternal life, and that way is Jesus. He warned us about the times of deception, about how the world would be seduced by the Antichrist's false promise of safety and prosperity. But for those who remain faithful, there is one unshakable truth. There is no salvation outside of Christ. No matter what the world offers, only He can guide us to eternal life, and that choice cannot wait. Many believe that they will have plenty of time to decide when the mark of the beast is imposed, 
but scripture shows us that the deception will be so great that those who are not firm in the faith will be easily seduced. The only way is to abide in Christ now before it is too late. The choice between accepting the mark or following Jesus will be a choice of eternal life or death. And today, you are being called to reflect on this, to stand on the side of the one who has already conquered the world. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6, he left no room for doubt. There is no other way. The world may offer shortcuts, easy solutions, but true security exists only in Christ. By refusing the mark of the beast, you will be uniting yourself with Jesus the only one who can guarantee your salvation. But this requires an unshakable faith, an absolute trust in God. And that faith begins today now, the moment you decide to give everything into His hands. Are you ready to make that decision? Throughout this video, we've seen what's coming and the weight of each choice. And now God calls you to stand on His side, to resist the deceptions of this world. You don't have to face it alone. Jesus is by your side, and He is the one who strengthens us to resist, guides us to eternal life, and sustains us in the most difficult moments. The decision you make today can change not only your present, but your eternal destiny. If you've been touched by this message, imagine how it can touch and reach more people. Don't keep this truth to yourself. If you believe that what has been said here can change lives, share this video with someone who needs to hear that word. Leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell to continue learning and being strengthened by God's truth. Together, we can spread this message and prepare many for what is to come. Now before we close, let's pray together. If you are ready to give your life to Christ, or even if you want to reaffirm your faith in Him, I invite you to join me in prayer. May this be a prayer of surrender, of total surrender, and of absolute trust in the only path that leads us to eternal life. We pray, Heavenly Father, here we stand before you, acknowledging your sovereignty and crying out for your power in our lives. We know that the world tries to deceive us, to distance us from you, but Lord, today we reaffirm our commitment to Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth and the life. We surrender to you our hearts, our fears, our failures. We know that without you, we are weak, but in you we find strength, direction, and purpose. Holy Spirit, come upon us now. Flood our lives with your presence, and may our every step be guided by your wisdom. Lord, we ask that your fire descend upon us, purifying us and strengthening our faith. We do not want to be deceived by the ways of this world, but rather we want to walk in your truth, guided by the light of Christ. Father, in the midst of the battles, temptations, and challenges that lie ahead, give us courage, give us boldness to stand firm on the only path that leads to eternal life. Lord, strengthen our feet so that they do not waver. Put your word on our lips and in our hearts the burning desire to seek you every day. O oh, Almighty God, we surrender completely to you. We reaffirm that Jesus is our Savior, our Lord, and there is none other besides him. May your spirit envelop us, protect us, and guide us through every decision, through every choice, giving us discernment to resist the deceptions of the enemy. Father, we want to live according to your purpose, fulfill your calling, and be light in the midst of darkness. Lift us up, Lord, as a strong people, prepared for the times to come, trusting that in you we are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus, the only one who has conquered death, the only one who guarantees us salvation, we pray and thank you, because we know that you are faithful to fulfill each of your promises. Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you in the next videos. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. 
Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.